Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, Tyvis Powell, Jason Lloyd. Plus, ba da 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 you're loving him, Mikey McNuggets. And so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show starts now. Booyah! Hey, here we are! Yeah! Oh my God. <laughs> we don't know what's going on here right before we go on air. Welcome to the ultimate Cleveland <laughs> sports show. Uh, Jay, the sky is falling. I like the sky that. is I like falling. That. The sky is falling, everybody. What? We've lost Bill what? Callahan. We might as well go home. Well, don't minimize it. Uh, well, yeah, uh, uh, two days ago, I was told the defensive line coach puts out tackling dummies, and now the offensive line coach is the end of the world. So how is that possible? Well, we've seen what magic he's worked here. Have we? Yes! <laughs> My God, if you haven't seen it, you're blind. How good was the offensive line blocking for the running game this year? Who was that? They were you and me the- were the tackles. Yeah, they well, did. you're you know better than that. You know, that I know. Is. I know it's not that big a deal in the end, in the grand scheme of things. Wow, things. there's only one assistant coordinator that would give me pause, and it's him. It's disappointing. I mean, one on the Brown the staff. World. You know, Jim but, Schwartz but, obviously. I, I, of course, it matters. It's just not the end of the world. Let's not make a bigger deal. Than I it think is. it's the second most important coach on the staff. I agree right with now. that. I think DC is first. Yeah. And then offensive line. Yeah. Uh, I'll throw it out there. Joe Thomas. He's in Germany. Why? Coaching. Coaching. Learning how to be a coach. Yeah. Mm. Uh, he told us on the show when we asked him point blank, oh, that's definitely in my future, but when my kids are older. But I know how this works. When you're sitting at home, you run out of things to do. Usually when I hear people say they want to spend more time with their kids, they're doing something else within a year. I don't know. Oftentimes, yes. I stayed home with my kids. (laughs) I want to go spend time with my kids. That's exactly what I'm doing. (laughs) Um, I mean, we'll see. We're going to talk all about that coming up in just a little bit. Somebody's got to explain to me why the defensive line coach is irrelevant and the offensive line coach is that important. Can we do that after a read? He has explained it to us. I've played both, Mm -hmm. and I'll tell you why. Yeah, we'll do that after a read here. And we have only three reads today, which is good for you guys. You don't have to hear my voice that often. But FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook, guys. It never changes, and Super Bowl season is here, and FanDuel is going to help you become a winner over the next few days. If you're like the UCSS squad, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seats on the couch, grabbing your favorite snacks, and placing some super bets. Next week, I'm going to have all my favorite prop bets for you guys, so if you want to join us on FanDuel with those prop bets, we'll let you know what we're betting on. FanDuel has so many different ways to help you end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on which team will win the Super Bowl this season, you can also bet on which players will score touchdowns, how many points will be scored, and so much more. Today, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first bet of $5 or more wins. So just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash UCSS. UCSS, make every moment more with FanDuel, an official partner of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show and the NFL And thanks to our new organizing system, I'm able to get all these tickets that win out there without question. Aaron at the Shield NA turned $10 into $1,714 yesterday with a frankly absurd same-game parlay. Only four legs. Kelly Oubre, three made threes. Jordan Clarkson, eight assists. Paul Reed, ten or more rebounds. And Laurie Markkinen, over nine and a half. All four hit ten bucks into seventeen hundred dollars. Why is that such a long odds? Because Jordan Clarkson Clarkson doesn't pass, doesn't Kelly Oubre doesn't shoot, and Paul Reed doesn't play. Yeah. What what kind of inside (laughs) info did he have? I mean, even look, those are still it's a four leg parlay. Right, but if all the odds are long on all four legs, then I guess it's gonna pay out. I don't know. Has Clarkson had eight assists all year? Mm, I'll look into probably close. (laughs) He must know him. Hey, listen, man. Listen, listen, this is what I need from I'm you I'm joking, but not really. Hey, I'm, hey when I'm going to come in here, I'm telling y'all, in the next two or three weeks, I'm going to come in here and they're going to be like, wow, G. Bush had a, a 22-leg parlay and it hit? 
for thousands. And we'll never see him again. Yeah, I'm going to be yeah. out of here. You know, I'm going to let's go work Miss Conn. You better win a lot more than a thousand <laughs> if you want to be out Yeah, there. I mean, that'll get you by for a day or two. <laughs> Listen, don't get it twisted. My wife is an Asian woman and an accountant. She is not having that. She checks. <laughs> You better be at work, dog. Okay, I wish you hit in the lottery. Long term. Uh, Mike, we're also going to do our uh, ultimate Cleveland sports show Super Bowl five-leg parlay yep. beginning Monday. Yep. We're all going to – we're going to look at all the different prop bets. I think there's more prop bets for the Super Bowl than any other event on the planet. Well, we're going to pick the ones that we agree – you know, five that we agree on. And we'll debate them on Monday, we'll, and then we'll put one in the column. And so this is going to be probably the most well-thought-out, well-discussed, well-debated five-leg parlay in the history of parlays. Mm. Because I don't know how often we all four agree on anything. Never. And we're not putting Rarely. it in there if we don't yeah, agree. Right. Well, next we're, week it'll be three. It'll only be three, three of us every day. Okay. But still, I mean, let's see what we can do. Color I'm gonna, of the Gatorade. I'm going to put money on it, and I don't bet. Well, so hopefully our viewers will how come they don't have no, fan duel it, too. How come they don't have no dark Gatorade colors? That's a good know. point, G. But hey, G, I'm not we'll drinking talk a brown week. Gatorade. Okay? We'll talk yeah. about that Just next saying. week. All That's right. a little gross if you think about <laughs> it. They can have purple. I'm Where just, we are starting? Oh, they do have purple, purple, and I kill it. They have purple. Yeah. They have purple Gatorade. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready to go. G, yes. where we're starting today though is the loss of Bill Callahan for the Browns. Earlier this week, you said their defensive line coach hire, Jacques Cesaire, if I believe I pronounced that right. You didn't really make a big deal out of the hiring because you alluded to your time playing Division One college football, saying defensive line coaches just set up dummies and it doesn't really matter. Yes. Why does this position loss or position coach loss hurt more than others, and what does this do as opposed to other positions that you said the position coach just frankly doesn't make that much of a difference? Because it, it, it's, it's, it's night and day between how difficult it is by O-line versus D-line. O-linemen have to be more cerebral. O-linemen are smarter. O-linemen um, have more synergy. Um, O-linemen have to have gel, and they have to like each other and know what each other is doing. Plus, uh, being an offensive lineman is like um, trying to disarm somebody with a weapon, and you don't have nothing but your skill set, your hands. So, you know, that's the way offensive linemen are. So a lot of their, their, what they're doing is technique, is hand placement, is, is pad level, is your, is your kick slide off two centimeters here. Why did you get beat? Because your shoulders were turned this way. You let the inside move come. So it's all about dancing and technique. Plus, you have to also be able to be powerful and have leverage and know where the blitz is coming from and know how to pick blitzes up and do film work that says, okay, they're going to do this, that, and the third. So it's much more difficult to be an offensive lineman at the highest level than a defensive lineman. Defensive lineman is all about three things. It's about to get off. It's about your, uh, your, your, your get off, your, your pad level, and your, your, your relentlessness running to the football. You could teach somebody to stay low, right? You can draft somebody and they could have great get off and they could be a good athlete. They don't have to understand anything. They, all you do is get off the ball one on one. Can you beat them around the hoops? Do you have a counter move or something like that? It's just different levels of it. If you have a defensive lineman and you watch a film, the first thing they're going to say is, all right, how, what are you doing at the line of scrimmage? And, and are you, are you, do you have the first meaningful contact in this play? Other than that, it's just it is what it is. You don't got to tell Miles Garrett nothing. Just all Get right, the quarterback Michael Parsons. You don't got to tell him nothing. He don't. He, that he's mastered that. But when you get a, a, a right what, tackle, did Joe Thomas need the, so much coaching? Yes. I mean, it, really? You you really think Joe Thomas needed that much coaching? Yes. I, I, it's, I, it's, that's a little insulting to your fellow defensive linemen. That they're a bunch of dopes. That's that. When when you talk about def, DBs, what's the difference between a DB and a receiver? Receivers got better hands. There it is. Now you're a DB then. Well, and the other thing, too, is one is actionary and one is reactionary. And and I liked your point about the gelling together. It's much more of an orchestra on the offensive line. Yep. Not to say defensive lines don't work in tandem because they do often in twos. But the offensive line is a unit. And they, they have to be on the collective same play sheet. And it's I think there's more of a I don't want to let my the guy next to me down. It's really foxhole stuff down there. And I think the other thing, too, and correct me if I'm wrong, I just think that Bill Callahan is widely regarded around the league as not just the best offensive line coach, but I've had people tell me, no, he's the best position coach. So whenever you're losing the best at anything, it's going to hurt, in my view. I don't know. I just, I, I, he's, he's an excellent coach. He's done a very good job. I just think losing a position coach is a minor blip. It's maybe more of a blip than a guy who's not as good a coach, obviously. 
But I, I mean, there was a member of the media who, who in Cleveland who insanely said this is like losing a playoff game. That's what the equivalent is. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. It's not like losing a playoff game. Uh, and We're going to find out. I'll tell you, I, you may dismiss this, but yeah. this could cost them with free agents. Because one of the reasons Ethan Posick came here, he had, he had options. Mm-hmm. The reason he came here was Bill Callahan. That's he, fascinating. He told me it was the strength and conditioning staff. He really liked the Browns strength and conditioning staff and to be coached by Bill Callahan. Wow. And right. look what he's done. And Posick's turned his career around. He now, was he's just been a healthy. guy when he came he's here. He's just a guy. Now, he had a lot of injuries. Yeah. But he's, been, and he's had some injuries here, but he stayed relatively healthy, and this is what's happened. The job he did with Dewan Jones this year was remarkable. We talked about it before the draft. Gee, you were all over him. I said the talent is there. It's the maturity issue. Is he mature enough? to? He had some growing up to do. Well, guess what? Dewan Jones grew up this year. Big time. And, Fast. He, and, and he, he was throwing up on the field. Yeah. <laughs> on I don't know. That he, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not arguing with you that he's not an excellent coach. I just think I, I don't think we want to overstate. This is not devastating to the franchise. I, 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 I just think that's way overblowing it. It's not you think like it's devastating to the franchise. I think it's a, a big blow. I do. I do too. Yeah. I'm with Jay. I don't. I wow. mean, degrees to this, if you want to call it. I mean, losing a player is, is more devastating of than course. losing a coach. But I think this well, is depending significant. Depending on the player, right? But I, I, again, like and. You know, you can look at Jed Wills and say he hasn't reached his potential, and that's fair, but I think that's more probably on Jed than on the coaching, and I still maintain... So the guys that don't do well, we blame the player. The guys who do, we give the credit to the coach. You don't think players are accountable in They in do, but you can't just blindly give all the credit to the coach you don't. and not give him any of the blame when but a first-round pick doesn't I, pay I give a ton of credit to Dewan Jones for growing up and doing what he needed to right. do, but I also think Bill Callahan had a hand in sure, that. Sure, but then you got to give him at least some level of blame for I, Jed I just said that. Yeah, yeah, I just well, said that. Well, well here's, here's the thing. One, one thing why it, why it hurts is, there's an old infomercial. I forget what the infomercial was about, but the, the slogan was, set it and forget it. You just set the timer and you come back and the meal's done. When you're Kevin Stefanski, you had a luxury of setting and just let him do it. Forget it. Like, Callahan got that. So hire another good outline coach. I mean, you know, there's, there's other good so coaches. Let me, let, me ask you, let me ask you this. Let me ask yeah. you this. If, if you're doing business, right, we, we all do business. And if you're in the business world, say, for instance, you use you lose your your, your senior senior marketing manager. Mm-hmm. He had a bunch of he had a bunch of connections in the industry. New people could could uninformally just walk in places, check the temperature of some things. Maybe they owed them some favors. The guy was really plugged in to, to a lot of you know things in the, in the industry. If you lose that guy, and you say, well, just bring in another good sales manager. It don't work that way. What if that sales manager don't have the relationships? What if he don't have the well, sales force? What choice force? do you have? You got to bring in somebody you else. Bring in somebody. I, I understand what Bull's well, saying. I, just, I, I mean, get that. You're going to bring someone in, but there are certainly levels to all of this. Yeah. Whenever, and, and I like your analogy, whenever an organization loses a critical piece, it becomes more important with how you replace that job. So obviously they're all important in their own ways. But we sat here and sang the praises of Bill Callahan week in and week out last year because what we kept saying was we've got two replacements on the, on the bookends and that's a recipe for disaster. And then on Monday we would sit here and say, wow, okay. didn't even notice the left and right tackle. Didn't hear the names. We didn't say that in the playoff game. No, we didn't. But you can't. So, Bill, Bill yeah. Callahan, job yeah. he did this year. A did an excellent F. job. He well, did an excellent McGrady. job. He's an excellent coach. No, it's I know, a, but what loss. would you grade him? As I, the... I give him a B plus. Oh my! And uh, I give him an A plus, and okay, I don't even think twice about it. I think he did a he did a tremendous job, but I'm just saying, I I just think in the grand scheme of things, no one position coach takes a team, moves a team up or down that much. We need opinion. Joe Thomas on this. That's what we need. Unfortunately, I'm not I know sure if in Phoenix Europe. works internationally. I'm not sure we got the international. Yeah, I don't know, the, but I mean, it's in the afternoon. Budget, yeah. it's, it's afternoon for I mean, him. the Browns had good offensive lines I would love to hear from Joe Thomas. Before, before. I don't think there's a better voice on this topic. Yeah. We can reach out. It probably be a no, but maybe he might say, hey, guys, I'm not doing anything. I'd love to come on. I'll there's no next. debating that it's a loss for the Browns. It certainly is. They did the right thing. They let him go with his son. It and is by the, the right way, thing. what happened That's to the important. report a couple of weeks ago that, no, that wasn't going to happen? It was wrong. From a reliable reporter that we all trust. It's yeah. the it's the right thing to do because yeah. when that mm-hmm. first and I kind of heard a little bit of the same and when that first started coming out, I was really disappointed in that because it, this is the right thing to do. Let him go coach with his it kid. Is. 
it's such a thrill for him. And you have to be known as an organization that does right by your That's people. That's right. You're right. And, and this is a really good way to get a bad reputation is to try and fight this or block this. You get a pretty and, – and Belichick used to do that. Belichick used to, like, guilt trip his coaches about leaving and trying to block him and everything else. Well, he refused to let them talk to the media. But, but he was also winning Super Bowls, and he could get away with a little bit more. But the Browns aren't in that position. You have to do right by the people that do right by you. And this was absolutely the right move. As much as it hurts, as much as it stings, yeah. you want to be known as an organization that has your people's back and does right by I your people. I agree with that. The, the, here's, here's, here's a, a great way of looking at it. The way it affects you is if you are an organization and you're drafting somebody and you've got great people that can develop people, you have more room for error. I can draft a guy and say, I think he's a C guy, um, but I believe that he can get to a B because I got a great guy sure. coaching him. Sure. Now you have less room for air now because you That's can fair. draft a guy and you say, well, I think that he's going to be a B guy. I, he get to an A, but he never goes anywhere. He stays the same when he came yeah. into the organization. That's why it, training and development but is a huge part of that. why can't you say that about the other coaching position? Because I just, because I just think that's a little unfair. Uh, well, here's the thing. Certain coaches are higher on the pecking order. Uh, is of it, course. Is it more difficult to teach a quarterback or DB? A quarterback. A quarterback. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Is it teach? Is it, I'm just saying it's easier to teach well, a, they, a defense alignment over a, a offense. I alignment. hear you, but it, but let me ask you this: if, 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 How many? If you had to say right now today, how many wins the Browns are going to get next year? I know it's impossible to answer, but just answer anyway. How many? How many wins the Browns next year? What do you got right now? They got double digits. They got better, better be 11, 12. Okay. Are you changing that number because Bill Callahan's gone? It's hard. It's hard. I, I might. I would it's, go it's, this way. It's hard to say in the totality. You, you of think? Do you think Bill Callahan is worth wins and losses? I think he's. I, I think he's I probably do. worth a win this year with all the injuries. Yeah, they had I agree. On that line. I yeah. think he was worth a win. And this year, this and year, and, year I, and it's impossible to know what the injury yeah, situation will look that, like but, next year. But all right. Well, <laughs> then you hit. Then you just completely dismiss the entire coaching profession. Just if you they, don't say no, that they had so many. I'm dismissing you. You guys have been shitting on the defensive line coach for two days. And I'm dissing this they, position. They were, they were, they were so ravaged by injuries. Yes, they were bringing in guys off the street. Who had ever heard of Jaron Christian before he got here? Nobody. Nobody, he, nobody wanted uh, him. He played in the league. It's not like he was not on a pra- in the league. He, he was on a practice squad. Nobody wanted him. I hear you, but the Browns are not the only team to pick up an offensive lineman off the practice squad and have him play. Have I mean, him play that like well. It's so unique. Have him play that Did well. Did he play and, that and, well? And, I don't know that he played that well. I don't think I he mean, graded out as a Pro Bowl player, but yeah. he didn't get the quarterback. Jay, so I'll ask you a question. I don't know if you know the answer to this offhand. How many games did the Browns play with their starting five from when they broke camp? Zero. Zero. Compton got hurt in the opener. There you so go. So they played one half their game. offensive half game. What, what do you, you say that as if that proved something. It what, didn't prove it. Here's what it proves. It their proves offensive line didn't that play their great. Their offensive line yeah. was a hodgepodge. It was mixing and matching, too, is the other thing. Because like you said, you always hear about, well, the Bengals are playing their 17th game this year, and they've had one starting line combination. I'm using them as an example. Yeah. It happens. And what do, what do the coaches, what do analysts say about that? Well, the cohesion that they've had, they all know each other's tendencies. They're all working as a well-oiled unit. This this one was like, okay, you're out, you're in, you're out, and you're out, and, and, and you're in. There was a time where Wyatt in. was the only starting lineman and, right, left but standing. You say right. that as if they played great. The offensive line did not play but, great. But if, he, if, they were, if they didn't have good coaching, they would have never won 12 games. Well, there's no way to quantify that. If, uh, you, if you had another offensive line coach who was the – eighth best offensive line coach in the league, they might have been just as good. And even if they were a pinch worse, I'll, I'll say, in theory, that doesn't mean they would have lost I, I, the game. I'll just give you the insight yeah. of just being on the offensive line. Yeah. When you walk up there, yeah. it's unwritten. If they run something or they run a twist or a text, one guy leaves, one guy drops back, one guy come. every single person on that offensive line has to see and diagnose the same thing. Do you know how rare it is? I, what, hold on. Yeah, Do you yeah. know how rare it is? For five people to see one thing and then react in unison, it's almost impossible. But was the Browns offensive line, you guys keep giving me examples as if, see, it's, it's vindicated because the Browns offensive line is great. But the Browns offensive line wasn't great this year. It was mediocre. Now, you want to say with a worse coach, it would have been even worse than that? You're probably right. I just don't know. You're making it seem like this is the only offensive line coach in the whole <laughs> league that makes a difference. And I think that's crazy. I think he's universally considered to be the best. By who? Everybody, Bull, in, the ask everybody around. in the league. Everybody in the league? Yes. Well, 
I don't know about everybody in the league because I haven't talked to everybody I in the league. But you, I have but talked e- to a lot of people that e- say he's Jay, universally. Just, even if he is the best offensive line coach in the league. Then that's a loss. That, nobody's saying it's not a loss. I'm saying it's not the end of the world. We're, I don't nobody know. said well, I don't the, know the who's going to come up it, tomorrow. You guys said it's the difference between wins and losses. I just don't buy that. I think he was worth one win this year with all the injuries that they had. I guess it will never know. I don't think we'll get Joe, right? We're not going to get Joe. We tried texting him. The messages haven't gone through. Okay, that's a problem. I reached out to Lomas Brown. Lomas is a friend of the show. He's been on. I, I, I think Lomas, at least from the people that I've talked to on offensive lines, how they integrate, how they work together, he was so highly thought of that he was brought into Tampa at the end of his career knowing that he wasn't going to play. Yeah. They had a guy named Kenyatta Walker who really needed yeah. a mentor. He came in, and he was essentially a second offensive line coach. Now, he did end up playing considerable amount, but that was because of injuries and whatnot. Um, I would then worked with him for six or seven years at ESPN, and whenever the network had an offensive line issue like this, they brought in Lomas just because he's widely regarded as one of the best of our time. Yeah. I, he'll probably reply before the end of the show, and we'll see what he, he says. Is, My yeah, question he to him was, sure. we're having a discussion on Bill Callahan leaving. How big a loss is that? Yeah. How much difference can an O-line coach make? The only thing I would end with that would be what I opened with is that when players are telling me the reason they came here was because of the coach, he's pretty good. Yeah, That's that makes, good. That makes yeah. a difference. I don't think anybody's yeah. arguing that he's not awesome. I, I, the argument is how big a loss. And I see what you're saying. It's not yeah. tangible to see how much of a right. difference we don't know. he makes. I just, However, there will be a point next season. Now, hopefully, we're not nearly as injured next year as we were this past season. But there will be a point next season where Bill Callahan's name comes up. It will either be, we don't miss him. This offensive line is incredible. Or, where's Bill? Yeah. And, you know, so the proof will be in the pudding. We'll, we'll look at how the offensive line plays. But in the past... I, I, th- I know they weren't very good this year, Bull, yeah. but they exceeded my expectation. If you would have listed all the guys that we were going to play and the amount of games they were going to play, I would have told you this season is going to be an outright disaster. And yep. it, it was not. Fair. Yeah, I mean. And I think because of the offensive line, it, was, it wasn't. It, it, I, I think it's a, it's a loss. It's disappointing. There's no doubt about it. I, I guess I was just set off by the comment that it was equivalent to a playoff loss. Well, it nobody here said that. It was so absurd. And also, if Chubb is healthy, this line would have looked a lot better. You I, aren't I, kidding. I think Jerome Ford had a lot to do with why you think the line looked as awful as it did. I would second that. If, and, if, Bull, let me ask you this. We're because not they didn't name get the, the quarterback, name, they didn't but get the quarterback it, killed. Right. Is well, it possible yeah. that you have uh, some animus with said reporter, and so no matter what he says, you find egregious? <laughs> No, I, because I, I love that you chuckled because <laughs> I think there's something to that. I mean, it's it's just a, it's just so much of an overstatement. Uh, fair. I don't particularly care for that reporter, true, but I it's not like I bring him up very often. No, you don't, and I don't you want know. to bring up his name because you know, I don't want, we don't want to do that. But um, whenever Lomas replies again, I'll, let me I'll, make I'll it, let it clear. It in. I, Bill Callahan's a great coach, and it is a loss. I right. just don't think we need to go overboard. It's fair, as if it, this is just kills the team. It matters. Yeah. And and any um, these when they when they fired the tight end coach and these other guys, I think it barely mattered at all, if at all. Yeah. Obviously, this matters. I just don't think it matters as much as some other people. Did. I checked on my way in. I wanted to see if the sun came up over Berea, and I didn't see the sun. And it well, is Groundhog's Day, so yeah. maybe we're in for. Se- yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, yesterday, I had to put on my sunglasses in the car for the first time in like a month, right? <laughs> Ditto. Yeah. Same. All right, all right, I- guys. Tonight. And by tonight, I mean at 5 o'clock, it is the first ever Ultimate Spinoff Show. The Ultimate Cavs Show debuts tonight at 5 o'clock. Jason and I recorded it this morning. We had some uh, scheduling things later tonight, so we recorded it this morning. I'll be honest, Jason, you can attest. I think it came out very good. If you're a diehard Cavs fan, you want to hear some basketball-only talk tonight at 5 o'clock. The Ultimate Cavaliers Show tips off. Ultimate Brown Show starts Monday with G. Ultimate 216 next Thursday with Earl. Ultimate Guardians coming as well, but the first ever Ultimate Spinoff show tonight, 5 o'clock. Make sure you guys tap in, tune in. Myself, Jason Lloyd, talking all things Cavs. And speaking of Hang Cavs. Hang on, I'm going to plug Mike. Please. That sounded weird. Yeah. But pause. <laughs> Definitely that not was a pause. Definitely yeah. not please. Man. <laughs> Mike Lord. knows his stuff on he basketball, does. and this podcast is going to give him an opportunity to show it. He played Spread at a high level. No, I'm serious. Like, he played yes. at a high level. He sees things. Like, <clears throat> I enjoy talking to people who see the game differently than I do. And, and Mike's one of those guys because he played the game. So he can see the nuances that I don't see. I have 
the the what's the I, I have the institutional knowledge of having covered the Cavs for a real long time, still knowing a bunch of people in that building, knowing a bunch of people around the league. So I can bring that context to it. But in terms of like how it plays out, I think you're really going to enjoy listening to Mike break down basketball and break down the Cavs. It's something we don't get a chance to do on this show very often because the Browns take up so much oxygen on the show. But I, if you're a diehard Cavs fan, I think you're really going to enjoy listening to Mike break down just the plays, the players, and how they all fit together. I really enjoyed it. I, enjoy, I, I mentioned I that it. yesterday that this is going to, for Cavs fans, it will be the mandatory. If you're only going to watch or listen to one thing, mm-hmm. I think this show yeah. is going to be it. And also, yesterday, we were having a conversation about, so who goes in the rotation if you start, because now you're just talking about, like, the eight-man playoff rotation and who's going to be out. And uh, I think everybody was kind of in agreement about Dean Wade. And, and you wisely said, wait a minute, guys. Here's a guy with a lot of different tools, and you got to be careful to, to push him to the side because he can help you. And watching him specifically last night, Hearing your voice echo in my head, I kept saying, Mike's right. Mike's right. He's not a guy that is just going to jump off at you. But when you look at all the little things he does during the course of the game, you're like, yeah, he's got value. Dean was a plus 20 the other night when he shot two of eight. What was was he last night? I think he was plus 17 last night. I didn't look. I didn't look at what it was last night. It was, night, again, the whatever same night, is a, is whatever plus night we night is something that NBA people take very seriously. We look it, at it. It depends. It, it, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a metric. It's not the end-all, be-all by any means. But yeah. when sometimes when it is so much glaringly, drastically different than yeah. everyone else, yes. that's when you notice it and say, okay, what's going on there? Plus 19 last Is there night. something with the chemistry of that guy with other people I mean, I, I something? Yeah, right. just, it's just another shooter on the floor. To me, like, you know, Evan's first game back, Evan was a minus, and Dean was a plus 20. And it has to do with the spacing of the floor, how you have to defend that, and the driving lanes that it creates. One thing yeah. we got to be careful of, we're, we're, you know, we're building up Mike's ego a lot. <laughs> I'm okay with that. we got to calm I'm down okay with, with that. that. I think Mike, is, Mike has a lot of friends that he played with. Mike's college mm. is kind of like, you know how Miami of Ohio is the cradle of coaches? No, Mount, no, no Mount Union. Mount Union. No, and John Carroll. No, but Miami of Ohio before Mount Union. If mm. you go back, Bo Beckler, Woody Hayes, a lot of greats came through Miami. Then it became Mount Union. But we're not there's, like Miami. There's we don't some, do that. I know you don't. I don't either. I'm a BG guy. <laughs> there's something about your alma mater that has produced NBA executives. I'm going to do that story this summer. And, and, it's a, it's yeah. summer you know what? I'm Give them do that some story. pub because yeah. they're out there, right? Yeah, we've got two current GMs. Three current video coordinators and three current. It's crazy. It's and the like, video coordinator job is a lot more important than it sounds. It's an assistant coach job, yeah. It is, and yeah. it's a, and it's usually it's, a stepping stone it's a to pipeline. bigger things. Yeah, it's a pipeline. Eric yeah. Spolstra was the video coordinator. That's exactly that. Now right. a former teammate of mine is in that position in Miami. So yeah, so it's interesting what's going on there. But Mike is a different basketball mind. Yeah. He sees the game um, from an expert point of view, and I think this show is going to be it's going to be a huge. You're going to have all the big uh, Cavs fans. And once they trade Mobley and, and Garland to yeah, L.A. We talked, about, LeBron, we talked about that tonight. So. This will probably be mm, the number mm, one podcast right. in mm. all of America. You're laughing at that. You They're here. not trading mm. Mobley or Garland. I remember mm. when he did that with, with Baker mm. Mayfield. Yeah, he, he did. Hey, real, top of his real, real quick, if you guys ever do feel like I am getting a little too cocky, please. Put me back in my pedestal. Oh, boy, we'll <laughs> knock out the heart. That is full for As you guys say, in the chat, York minute. for you guys behind the glass, for yeah, you guys out there. But, G, you brought this up yesterday. It was fascinating. And, Bo, yes. I'll say it again. No one's better to have this conversation with than Jason Lloyd because he was in the locker room when Kyrie was here. But Donovan Mitchell was named the Eastern Conference Player of the Month for the month of January. Just the second Cav to ever do that. LeBron, Donovan Mitchell. And, G, you mentioned it yesterday. It's close as hell. Is this year's Donovan it Mitchell. close. This version we're seeing right now, the January Donovan Mitchell, better than Pete Kyrie Irving when he was here in 2016. And Corey is that answered fair immediately. to look at just one month, though, Mike? Well, I'm saying this no, is right yeah, like, right 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 Donovan now. Mitchell okay. versus the yeah. peak. I'm just saying the last month's been the best month of his career, frankly. It's, it's close, Kyrie man. Irving in 2016 versus this Donovan Mitchell. It's really close. Pick your, pick your warrior. It's close as hell, bro. I want, I want to see what Jay says. Dude, uh, I'll we, go last. We discussed this yesterday. And we, we were all oh, kind of talk, like, oh, you talked about it at length. Well, no, well, we not were at all length. just no, like, God, I, that's a really tough one. 
for some reason, Corey, my son, texted the show and because there was some talk that Mitchell was better. And Corey was like, you guys are out of your dream. Yeah, this ain't hard for me. Yeah. This Go is ahead. not hard. Yeah, I know where you're going. It's Kyrie. And after, after listening. You don't think it's close? Oh, it's not close. Yeah, it's I It's Kyrie. Yeah, I agree. He hit the biggest That's- shot in the history of the franchise when everyone is exhausted and couldn't even get up and down the floor at the yeah. end of game That's seven ultimately, of, yeah. a, of an attrition series that took everything that everybody had out of them. It's as big a pressure moment as you can Go imagine. back and look at Donovan's playoff performance the last couple of years. Yeah. Until that changes, now, it's not no, close. Uh, in in yeah. fairness, Kyrie's done nothing without LeBron. Facts. Okay. Nothing. Okay. And Facts. Donovan Mitchell's always been the best player on his team. See, that's, that's not an apples to apples comparison. For me, comparison. that's the difference because Kyrie was always the two here, and right. Donovan Mitchell has to be the one. Now, I get what you're saying, Jason. Ultimately, Kyrie made the biggest shot in the history of the franchise, and so you got, yes, that you dude, have to put him ahead. That, but it's you, not an apples to apples Say comparison. what you want about him. Yeah. That dude don't care. Like, no, he doesn't. He don't care what no. you think. He's he not doesn't scared. care about the moment. He just is, and, and he, he is a magician. And, and Kyrie and I did not get along at all. He didn't get along with anybody. I was with him longer than anyone in his career, and I don't know him any better than anybody else. So this isn't me. Like, like obviously, I, 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 I admit that I have bias toward LeBron because I had a better relationship with him. With Kyrie, I'm just telling you, this dude was a wizard with the ball in his hands. And he does things on a court that very, very, very few people can do. It's not close to me. And Donovan's a wonderful player. He's a terrific player. He's a top 15 to 20 player in the NBA today. But if you are talking about you need a guy who's going to go win you a championship, I saw what Kyrie can do. I haven't seen it yet out of Donovan. And that's fair. But I think, I think the part about it not being close is unfair because you're, Kyrie was put in a situation and he came through. And Donovan Mitchell hasn't been in an equivalent situation. No, is but all we I'm can saying. fix that. But if he, LeBron came here, we could figure it out. But yeah, yeah we could. Sure. <laughs> How would Donovan be right. as a number two to LeBron well, compared to Kyrie? Da- Jason, I mean, he'll speak for himself, but he t- talked me off the ledge, if you will, before we started the show as, as to why ultimately the Cavs will not make a trade now for LeBron but should absolutely go after him in free agency at the end of the year I've been saying while for still years. having all these guys. Well, why not take another shot with him? Go ahead, Jason. Well, so, I mean, right when the show was starting, Brian put out a report. Brian Winters put out a report. He talked to Rich Paul, and Rich's like, listen, this is foolish. He ain't getting traded. They're not trading LeBron, and we're not asking for a trade. So that, that's over. But has, it, has Rich always told the truth to the media? To, <laughs> put, to put his name on like it that? Yeah. like that yeah. is significant. I love the way Wendy tweeted it out, too. It's yeah. just like, yeah. there it is. Yeah, there, like, yeah. So, and, and I thought it was nonsense on our morning call before the show. I thought it was crazy. I didn't think it was happening. So, but. Could they win a, t- a title this year? No, if they made the Lakers. Oh, the Cavs? Yeah, right what, now. What's the trade? LeBron to Cleveland and Mobley and Garland to LA. No. no. Really? No. Wow, we all definitively said they could. No, because yeah. LeBron, Donovan, and I guess Jarrett, like the Lakers can't win with LeBron and AD. They're a 500 team in the West, and the West isn't even that good. And this they're a 500 team. Would be team. Better. The camp, it would be better, but they're not. I don't think they're winning it. This isn't LeBron of 2016. He's still really, really good. He's putting up unbelievable numbers, but he is past his prime. Can and he, he can't, be that guy? He can. In a seven game that, series. It, what is this? The Toby Keith song. I ain't as good as I once was, <laughs> but I can be as good once as I ever was. Right. That's him. Like you need him in Game Seven. Okay. He can. He can put on his cape and be that guy. But I Just don't know that one he game? can. I don't know that he can get you to a Game Seven anymore. To, the amount. That, wow. that it exerted out of him in those series to get to that level. I don't know that he can do it to get to that. He can do it maybe twice, once or twice. I don't think he can do it for an so entire So do series. you think the Cavs could make and a deeper run? And then another series. And then another series. Sure. Do you think they would be more equipped to make a deeper run if that trade were made or not? I don't know. Here's, here's what I do know. This is what I told you. I have said for years I thought LeBron – could come back. They'd win. Yeah. Cha- I think they could win a championship next year if he came back. It's very likely. I think. I told him he that comes back. I told him that in the Is locker room. Is it possible though he goes off the cliff next year? I mean, no. we've been saying that for years. He's not going to go from what he's doing now to, you no. know, yeah, it's not like football. Eight, Guys four, don't usually, it's usually a slow it's decline. A decline. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is he going to go? What's he averaging this year? Like twenty eight, twenty nine, twenty eight, twenty. 
It's insane. LeBron's what he's averaging saying. like twenty-five, seven, and seven. It makes yeah, no the sense. Averages it defies are up across all the logic. League too. All logic. Yes. But. So, but I, I absolutely believe if he came back. Now, if he came back, it changes the the Donovan Mitchell conversation one hundred percent. I'm not trading Donovan Mitchell. If you get and 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 it's this is a, a pie in the sky discussion, yeah. but let's have fun with it. It's February and we have nothing else to talk about. <laughs> but I I do believe like he could come back. Like I, why not? Like why, why can't he come back? And and it, even if it means Donovan Mitchell walks, you don't. Who cares? You you, don't you have him. one year with it yeah. together, and you take it. You take your chances. Now they'd have to make the money work. He's not. He told me we had this conversation at Cleveland State over All Star Weekend, and he said like I ain't a mid level player. I ain't coming back for the mid level. So you got to make the. You got to find the money. He's gonna make forty million or whatever, fifty million. <laughs> You'd have to maybe trade Struess, trade. Levert, I don't know. You find a team that isn't trying to win, and you dump the money. That that's not necessarily an issue. And you give them a sweetener and, and whatever. So it's 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 possible. I'm not saying it's likely, <laughs> but it would be possible. And and I absolutely believe that he could come. That he should come back. I I'll think th- he should. I thought on top of that, if he wants to win, he that's the only way he do. He gonna win. He could win a title he with, win with the, title. the starting line. And, and that's why I don't make. Let's, well, there's let's other places say, he could go. And let's win a say title. let's say the Lakers. We're going to put him on the market and they were going to, I, I still, I would not trade Darius or Evan or any of these guys because he's a free agent this summer. You can keep all of those pieces, and, and have that conversation. But it gives you another chance to win. If you trade one of them, I don't know if it's, it gives you a better chance to win next yeah. year. If you keep all of them. Oh, oh. And there's one more thing that's really important to all of this. This is not the same Cavs team that he that left. And everyone talks about the relationship between Dan and LeBron and it was never good. And it wasn't, it was not even when he came back, it wasn't very good. But this is a different team, and Dan is not the same Dan that he was in 2016, 2017, When you say different, you mean they're the personality of the team? Well, the personality the of the team, because Dan's, dif- Dan's hovering over everything that they do is, is very much different now just because of his health issues. Sure. This is a very different organization than when they left, and when, that's when he, when he came back, um, I'm, 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 I'm going to ask about his psyche a little bit. When you look at his psyche, is he pragmatic? emotional or or some sort of a dreamer because when he came back in 2016 and just or 2014 it just felt like some sort of fairy tale thing um is he thinking more business now yes is he thinking more you know calculated now and and he won't let emotions get in the way of making a decision when he came back in 2014 i absolutely believe he felt like he owed he had to try and get this championship. Like he, fa- he failed. He was here seven years. They didn't get it done. It was a failure that they didn't win a championship. And also equally important. He was hated. Like he was not liked and it was turning. He was getting more and more cheers, 2012, 2013, mm-hmm. you know, there was more cheers in that arena when he came, but he knew he had to make it right. And Pat Riley actually told me that I called Pat for a story I was doing on LeBron a year or so ago. And Pat said, I knew someday, he had to go back. He had to make it right because that's home. And he had to be able to go home again, and he had to make it right. Now, I don't think Pat expected him to leave when he did. He thought he was going to get more time with him. And Pat was highly upset when LeBron left to come back. But ultimately, he knew eventually <laughs> LeBron was going to have to come back here to make it right. And, and he did. And, by the way, the talent that they had, Kyrie was a big reason why he came back. Mm-hmm, like sure. all the draft picks that they had, that they, they traded seven first-round picks in four years. There was a war chest of trade assets to go get the pieces that were missing, the Kevin Love. Winning that draft lottery was huge to get it because they knew the Wiggins was the piece that they could go use to go get Kevin Love. He called Kevin Love. They, the, the story drops, Lee Jenkins' story drops, that he's coming back. And LeBron called Kevin that afternoon, Kevin told me he was driving to work out in L.A., and LeBron called him, got his number, and called him, and Kevin pulled off on the side of the road, and LeBron said, I want you with me in Cleveland. Will you come with me? And, Le- and Kevin said, I'm in. That's well, a call you take. One, one, That's a call you take. One, one last question. If he, came, if he came home to make things right the first time, yeah. what would his motivation for coming back here a second time even though his wife loves it in LA. She, that's what would the, yes. be the reason well, to come back down? The reason to come back now would be to put a bow on the fairy tale. I have an yeah, that's the same answer. To put a bow on the fairy tale and to win a championship. They could win another championship. He went to LA and he said this and I don't know, you can disagree with this statement, but he said like all the decisions that he made were for other people. LA he went because he wanted to play for the Lakers. It was like the Yankees of baseball. He wanted to play for the most storied franchise in the league, and you can argue whether that's Boston or LA. He wanted to live in the sun and not the snow. And with all the rivalry that he's had with Boston his whole career, I don't think he could ever make that move. 
So he went to L.A. to play for one of the pillars of the history of the game. And he wanted to be part of that. And he has been part of that. And frankly, he has never been embraced to the level that I think he thought he would be in L.A. They never embraced him. He was embraced here, of course, and he he was embraced in Miami, but never in L.A. He won a a scoring title in L.A., and it was a blip on the radar. He won a title. It was, it, t- it was like, well, boom. Won, yeah, that, that was the COVID, it was COVID year? but it's still a title. But, G, to, to your question, and, and I'm, it's similar. My answer would be similar to yours. He loves to be loved. Yeah. And because he didn't get that adoration that he thought he would by joining the, the Kareem, Magic, Kobe legacies, I think to put a bow on it, to wrap it up, his career started in Cleveland. He won a championship in the middle of his career in Cleveland. He can come home. And, and ride it. into the sunset in Cleveland. And to the point of his wife loves L.A., he, she still lives in L.A. She can stay in L.A. It doesn't matter. He's, never, there, he's it, never lived away from his family. Is there any that chance, is Jason, that he would go to another team? I asked him that. I remember we were in Dallas. Yeah. His last year here, we were at a shoot-around in Dallas, and I knew he was leaving. Like, mm-hmm. it was – I just knew it was over. He, was, he got the title. It was gone. The organization, his relationship had fractured, and I said – how many is too many? How many teams is too many in your mind? Can you play for a third team, a fourth team? Like, how many is too many? And uh, it's just one conversation. Like, he could mm-hmm. change his mind. This and he has changed ago. his mind on big, big things yeah. like this before. But he, Shaq has played for a lot of, played for a lot Shaq's of teams. played for too a many. Yeah. yeah. The answer to Shaq's is too many. He said, when I saw Michael Jordan in a uniform other than Chicago, I knew anything was possible. Like, there is no such thing. Now, he said, at the end, he said, you know, I don't want to get carried away with, like, four, five, six – but three, three's not too many, and he's at three. Yeah. And I'll go back to the conversation we had over All-Star Weekend. And, I mean, it broke the NBA for All-Star Weekend. When I remember. He told me I could come back someday. Like, I wouldn't close the door on that. Yeah. And at first, he kind of dismissed it. And the more we talked, I don't know. I don't, I, I, that, that conversation is still stuck in the what back of my head. What was his pushback to your report? None. Because I thought at one point you had told a story where he was upset that you he reported he, something that he had told you. No, so after that came out, obviously it w- it was all over All Star Weekend. Right. It was it took over All Star Weekend, and then everyone started like speculating and putting their own spin on it. And you know how that goes. That's the part that upset him. Okay. And he got back, and he had a big mess to clean up when he got back to L.A. I Rob remember. Rob Polinka and Jeannie Buss were not happy with him. I remember. And so he had some damage control to do when he got back to L.A., and he said that he was taken out of context. That but, was the rub. Right. But he yeah. meant the other report, because yeah, I, right. I was mad. I never put anything on social media. I'm not going to do that. But when the Lakers came back the next time, I told him. I said, I, never, I didn't take you out of context. I wrote exactly what you said. He said, no, you got it right. Other reporters ran it was, with it. It was the other stuff that upset him. Yeah, but okay. he told me, like, you, you got it right. I knew there was <clears> an <throat> issue there. Yeah. And, uh, if, he, if he wants to be – and I've watched it on, online. I, I, you know, take the pulse of it or everything. And I think it even gets to a point – I know if it annoys me, I think it annoys him. He, he has statistically every record that counts. He is probably, like, at this point – it shouldn't even be a, 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 a close argument between well, the, the big who's the one best. Is titles. But that's here's the thing. And so the title thing gets him, and they, get, they give the Jordan six for six. But the only way he can eclipse Michael Jordan at this point is if he does something that was so outlandish and so crazy that he comes back to Cleveland not once but twice and then rides out and gets another ring. The people that... It, 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 that that, that will totally eclipse. The people that put him behind... The people that still have Jordan, Adam, Michael, well, uh, Jordan, Adam, LeBron will never change their yeah, mind. That's it. You're yeah. in your camp There's and nothing he can gonna, do. I you agree. know what he's yeah. done that nobody's ever done? He's taken three teams to three franchises to championships. Yeah. Nobody's done that. But don't give me Robert Ory in that. And, and I don't right. buy that you can't make an argument for Robert Michael. Orr. I have LeBron ahead of Michael. But I don't buy that you can make an argument for no, Michael. No, I, I, I mean, I oh, of course I, you can. Yeah. You can. You can make an argument, but yeah. like, to be truthful, I don't think you can be a true basketball fan and you be realistic with yourself and say that Michael Jordan has had a better career than Le- LeBron James. And they always talk about, oh, it's just the fact that he plays forever. That counts. Eight. Longevity and consistency I, I think the, and the, the fact that he didn't walk away in the middle of it. He for a can't just say titles times. because then Bill Russell's the greatest player sure. of all time. Eight straight trips to the finals on yeah. two different organizations is unbelievable. I and, think, and Jerry West said, we talked to Jerry West during the, it was the 16. I think it was the 16 finals year the Cavs won. Jerry said, 
I would strangle all of you guys if I was him to hear this crap about his finals record. And Jerry, of course, has a terrible finals record. Sure. But he's the logo of the NBA, one of the greatest ever. But he said, how, and he worked for the Warriors at the time. Jerry West worked for Golden State when he was saying this. He said, go back and look at how many series LeBron's team was favored in. It was like one or two. He had the number wrong. They were favored against Dallas when he was in Miami. That was bad. And I think it, it was bad. That, that's yeah. on that, him. That, that's that on hurt, him. That hurt the reputation. And right. it was Because Jordan never had one of those. And so. he was favored, I think, against OKC, I think, maybe with Miami. But the Cavs were never a favorite. In the, in the series against the Warriors. Right. And I never understood, I know, I think we've talked about this before, I never understood the fact why Michael is lauded for only getting there right. six times and I know, winning them all. I know, say the same thing. So if, Michael, the, if Michael had gotten to nine, if he got there earlier in his career and got to nine finals and lost three of them, how is that? You know, like so. If LeBron had only gone those three times and won, yes. that's better than right, taking I agree. bad teams I, there and losing. I don't Jason, understand that. I, logic. I agree with that. However, I would argue, and again, I have LeBron personally ahead of Michael. Right. But I would argue, and a lot of Jordan people argue this, and I do think it's fair that the competition he had to get through in the East was much harder than LeBron's competition. Different game too. Is it, I, it was but a, LeBron getting over Golden State was more impressive than all of that. Yeah. Isaiah Thomas said this the best. Yeah. He said Michael Jordan played. When did he come in the league? 84. 84. 84. He never beat prime Celtics. Never beat prime Lakers. Never beat prime Pistons. Michael Jordan started winning when Isaiah Thomas was out of here. Magic Johnson got the slow jam. And Larry Bird's back was falling off. Who did he beat in their primes? And he's right. And he really wasn't even beating the 76ers. What, 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 First of all, I, I have to go back and look at those years because I think he, he eventually did beat some of those good teams. Maybe they weren't at their peak, peak, peak of their – but Isaiah Thomas is a major axe to grind with Michael Jordan. Of and course he, he, and he also, I got to look at the numbers. And he also, Maybe he's right. And he also beat the brakes off Jordan twice. Uh, James, and won titles. I think the other thing, too, because I've always said that, too. I said, let's not punish LeBron because he's been to how many finals? Ten? Nine? Eight in a row. Right. One with the Cavs I think before the, that. Oh, nine. Lakers. Ten. Ten, ten, ten finals. So, I'm not going to punish LeBron because he's been to ten finals and only won four. On the flip side, a part of that Jordan argument is I think most basketball experts that were covering the sport at the time felt like he left two on the table. Now that's on him. Yeah. That was his decision to yeah. leave. Allegedly. Yeah. So, well, that's the joke is Michael made three straight and had to retire twice. That's it. That's how much it takes out of you. You yes. make it three straight and he had to retire twice after he won three in a row. Right. Bron, Bron going the best team. The Bron going eight years in a row. Is mind blowing. It is mind boggling. It's mind blowing. Especially when you consider that it wasn't like he went to the other conference. He had to get past the team that was winning it in his conference yeah. that he was a part yeah. of, and he moved teams, and then they, they make it. What so, were you going to say? Best who's team? the best team LeBron beat in the East? The Warriors. They won 70. No, no, in the East. Oh, okay. In the, yeah. he, in the East. He never the beat Celtic, Boston and Miami. The, yeah, Boston was very good. Yeah, the, the, that, those, that Boston game. The Where game seven. It, the, no, game six. Yes. He went game six. Yeah, yes. Right. Game the six. game six, his second year in Miami, that thing was close to unraveling. If it they was. lost that series, they may have dismantled that whole thing. There was because, talk that it was going to end. Yeah. And his performance in that game in he Boston 45, changed the poster everything. Dunk, held it together. Yeah. Changed which, everything. Which infuriated Cavs fans because we had seen him essentially give up yeah. in a Celtics game that was his last. Yeah. And then – to, to see the wizard LeBron, I, I watched it and I was I was infuriated. The loss to the Mavericks. That's bad. That's, well, that's the one awesome. that the kills one that's him. That's on the most. him. No that's question. on him. Because they yep. should have won that series. Yes. And his obviously his champion, he would have, he would have another championship. Agreed. I, I think that's the one that hurts him more than any because And then he's does, five and five in the finals and he doesn't have a rock, losing record. That was rock bottom for him personally. Yes. I think. Right. Was losing that and that's when he went home and did some Soul searching. I think he talked to Hakeem Olajuwon and, and just sort of rebuilt, I think, his mental side of the game because that's when he came back and put on that performance in Boston his Mike, second year there. Mike's going to do a read. Before we wrap it up, let's bow it like this. Just a number. Percentage chance LeBron comes back and ends his career as a Cavalier. Uh, 33%. Just, just a guess. I, actually, I think that's probably pretty close. I, I think he should. Yeah. I think it's a possibility. You're with 33? I'd say 33. Like yeah. Yeah. Only way it gets it done, LeBron, come back, win a championship, you move the needle 41%. 
You guys ready? Yeah. 75%. Wow. Oh, 75%. Wow. Ooh, oh, I hope you're right. You know the nostalgia side of LeBron. Hold on, let me check this. Is this, is I this will, might be a little is different. This, is, is this off-season Kool-Aid, <laughs> One, one, Kool-Aid. one elephant in the room that we have not discussed. Yeah. It's the Bronny draft. That's why. And listen. That's true. It's the he Bronny has draft. made it clear that he wants to play at least one season. He's not. A, Bronny is probably not a first round pick. I, from what I've way. seen, he's not a draft pick. But, he's a free agent. But the Cavs have their first round pick. He's not this playing year. well. Hold on. No, hold on. Hold on hey, I've hold been on. very underwhelmed. Uh, hold on. By, hold by on. Bronny. Don't even trip. Yeah. Because you can send him right over to the shot scene, to the Wolfstein Center. And get in with Imani Bates if he wants to still play around. <laughs> we got How's, spots. How's his other son doing? We in got high spots. He's the, he's the prospect. Right? I'll take what grade is he in? Uh, junior. Yeah. Junior. By the way, he's by the way his 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 other son's not ranked, and he only has three uh three offers. Oh really? Yes. I thought he yeah, was. Hey, Jason, I got a question. Earl's got one question, then we'll move on. Okay. Is, is is uh what's his name? Bryce is is Bryce better than Bronny? Like I, does I think Bryce so. have the most potential? Yes. Yeah. I've been told that Bryce is the, the real prospect. He's got the yeah, size. Yeah, he's big. But he has he an offer. He's not even ranked. He's not ranked. He has an offer from Duquesne. He has an offer from Ohio State, and a semi offer from USC. Those are the only three mm. offers he has. Hmm. Speaking of which, uh, shout out to the uh, quarterback <laughs> of the Rocky River Pirates who uh, just accepted a scholarship to Dayton. He's called Julian Patty. He was the quarterback. Rocky River made a nice run. So congratulations. You know who to once him. upon a time was a quarterback at Dayton? I don't. John Gruden. Look at that. That's right. The Flyers. Well, that's a, that's a great transition to our next topic, actually. And I'm going to pull it back. You're going to be like, how you get a transition Rocky River quarterbacks to the Browns? Well, I'm going to tell you in one sec. <laughs> After a quick word from FanDuel. It is Super Bowl season to all who celebrate from FanDuel America's number one sportsbook. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seats on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. And right now, FanDuel has a million different ways to help you end the season with not just one W, but two or three or hopefully even more. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers, if they join today, get $200 in bonus bets if their first bet of $5 or more wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to sign up. That is FanDuel.com slash UCSS. Make every moment with FanDuel more, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Our second winning ticket of the day comes from Lip Gallagher, and he said, Tell G I got the locks for him. Lock. This is a six part parlay G, and our guy Lip Gallagher g- turned 25 bucks into $629.29. Okay, nice. So if you want to listen to Lip, Lip, make sure you tweet let on me. Let me tweet let, a G. By the way, Lip, Car- Lip Gallagher is a character from the TV show uh, Shameless that's no longer on. Great show. Did not know that. A, a, these, but Lip got the locks. Lip, a lip is 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 trying to <laughs> coer- lips. He's trying to coerce me to lose my money. I t- I'm trying to gamble under the cover, bro. You can't be throwing me out there. My wife be reading. Unlock my account, please. Just I told you we was good. Unlock my account, <laughs> baby. I just want my. So bull. Yes. You mentioned the Rocky River quarterback. Part of the reason he was so successful this season was yes. Rocky River's offense had weapons galore, especially on the outside. Wide receivers were a main priority. You're right. That's actually for the true. Rocky River offensive system. I here. love that quote you said. Weapons galore. Weapons what did galore. You start yes, getting it was this a nuclear money arms race for the Rocky River offense with <laughs> all the weapons galore. at their quarterback who's yeah, going to Yeah, from the kids that haven't been hurt. stolen by St. Ed's and St. Ignatius. Different yeah. story, Recruited. but they had weapons galore. <laughs> and Andrew Berry told Zach Jackson of the Athletic, "This is the quote." Uh, shout out to Zach Jackson, a good friend of the show. This is his quote, uh, 157 C when you're ready. He was asked, what's your top priority this offseason? Andrew Berry said, I would not say that in, in terms of uh, receivers. I mean, we're still in good assessment mode. We feel pretty good about our group of pass catchers. I don't know many teams across the NFL that have two Pro Bowl caliber pass catchers and a good Liar. complimentary crew. We're always looking Liar. to add playmakers, but I think it would be aggressive to call that the top priority. Jay, put that through the BS meter for me, please. Uh, it's really tough because a lot of times the tell on uh, whether or not uh, general managers are lying is if their lips are moving. <laughs> they don't want to give away their trade secrets, they don't, especially before the draft. Um, there's no way, though. There is no way that all of that can be true. Part of that is true. They have two Pro Bowl caliber pass catchers. Undeniable. You need three. They don't well, have Well, not a third. many teams have three, that, to be fair. The Bengals do. 
Uh, they I don't. think the Rams. No, the Bengals don't have three. You don't think Boyd is a. No. no. Has he ever made a Pro Bowl? I don't think so. No. Huh. no. no. The year they were. I mean, he's a good player. The year, Our third. No. The year they, there's such a precipitous. But the reality off. is that David Njoku just reached that level. That's a smoke stream, And he's not a. No, no, no. I'm, I'm agreeing that, they, that it should be the priority. Yeah. It is. He's right that there aren't. Even that many teams that have two Pro Bowl passes. How catchers. many teams have two that pa- that add up to two thousand yards receiving? And it, and is there a team that has three receivers that go over three thousand yards? Uh, it's only happened a few times in NFL. I mean, the history. Browns had, the they had two thousand yard receivers can, can, here not long ago. So okay, let me go, so let me ask you this question because yeah. is there a way you can look up so we can put this to end because they try to act like we got something? Uh, how many teams have receivers? That get two thousand yards. I'm only looking for two thousand yards, one of one apiece from their receivers on the squad. Stand by. There we go. This past season or the last couple of years? No, I want. I just want to say last season. Because I don't. The Bengal. Because Chase and Higgins didn't get two thousand. But, but we count. Did years. Miami? Did Philly? Miami did. Philly did. Uh, this the season, Rams. I don't know if Cup got to a thousand. Cup did not get a thousand hurt. this year. No. 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 Uh, the Eagles did. Devonta Smith had just over a thousand, a thousand sixty-six, mm-hmm. and AJ Brown had just shy of fifteen hundred. Mm-hmm. Let's see who else did. Nice. Jalen Waddle have a thousand. Jalen Waddle had yes, a thousand fourteen yards. Tyree Kill eighteen hundred. Okay. I believe that is the only two teams. No, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had two. Chris okay. Godwin one thousand twenty-four. Mike Evans uh, twelve hundred fifty-five. Okay. To yeah, my so, knowledge, that is three teams. So, yeah, Andrew Berry, three. as you said, Jay, he's not going to give you his game. He, no. He's never going to say, absolutely, wide receiver. We are We're going priority. after all the wide receivers. We're yeah. desperate to Let's fight him. I'd be disappointed catcher. if he did say exactly. that. Exactly. Now, he, I do think he's right. I mean, they do have two real – to me, tight ends and wide receivers. Gee, stop shaking your head. I'm with you. they got to get another guy. I'm not trying to hear that. Well, None listen, how many teams had two guys go markedly over Njoku and Cooper? Not that I many. I mean, the, the Bucks had two that barely surpassed them. Yeah. Um, the Philly Lions, and, and Miami clearly do because they had a 1,500-yard guy and an 1,800-yard guy. If you're going guy. teams in total that had more, the Lions, Laporta, and Amon Ross St. Brown, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and Brandon Ayuk. That was the best trio in football. Debo had just shy of 900. And they're in the Super Bowl. Yes. Who, how many yards did Rasheed Rice finish with? Rasheed Rice had more. Yep, Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey both were ahead of uh, What did Rasheed Njoku? Rice have? Rasheed Rice. He didn't have 1,000, I don't think. Now, here's the thing. He came on late. They have Patrick Mahomes. He had so 938. Every, 938. Everybody else has to do more than Patrick Mahomes. Sure. Right? Facts. right? So... Who's the only team with three big time guys is really San Francisco. And they're in the Super Bowl. And they're in the Super Bowl. And they Jaguars don't have also they have two. Jags had two. So there's there's six or seven that had two, seven that had at least two thousand yard receivers. Now and the Browns to, aren't in that group. To me, it's not just about having a thousand yard receiver. I, I I don't I think it's an artificial number, especially yeah. now with seventeen games. It's what we use. It's how good are they? Sure. Facts. Right? Like you know, but that usually equals yards. Yeah, but the point is, like the one you said, the Brown, like there was one year where Jarvis Landry had like a thousand fifty, and Beckham had a thousand twenty. Well, right. their wide, their passing game wasn't good. They barely went over a thousand. Those guys were not top twenty wide receivers. It's the point. Do you have like David Njoku is now clearly a top ten, borderline top five, probably tight end in the league, Agreed. right? Yes. Amari Cooper is a really good wide receiver, but he's not in the top 10. He's somewhere no. between 10 and 20, probably. Yeah. 10 and 15. But So you need to, if you're not going to have a top five guy, then you got to, if you're going to beat Patrick Mahomes, and I know this is what you were getting to, if you're not going to have a top five guy, and they probably won't because top five guys are not available right now, Thank well, you. then you better have two top 20 receivers. Yes. Or, or at the very least, two top 25s receive. You know, you know what I'm saying? Agreed. Somewhere in that neck of the woods. And the guys we've talked about would. And even though Najoku's a top 10 tight end at this point, his track record of that level is only one year. So we don't know for right. sure that he can repeat that. I think we're confident. And a lot of those him. yards came from a quarterback <clears throat> that we know won't be throwing him the ball next That's year. That's true. So, yes, absolutely. I, I, I think with 100% that wide receiver – is their number one priority, and I'm hoping that Andrew Berry was just 
not spilling I'm, the beans. I, I'm not giving him no benefit of the doubt. He needs to be held accountable and he needs to get it done this year. Let's not act like he wasn't the same dude that said he didn't want no defensive tackles a couple years. Got his defensive coordinator fired. You had well, no. Well, then he did it. But, 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 but here's the thing. You punted on that season. Then you went and got him. I don't need you to have consequences to show initiative. You, yeah. I sh- you shouldn't l- have to have negative consequences before you are proactive in doing what you needed to do. So, yeah, I c- clap it up. I told you to fire Joe Woods the last year. You didn't have D tackles or linebackers. Guess what they did? You know what? Maybe defensive tackles are good. You end up with one of the top three defenses. You go get Jim Schwartz. Now it's time to get these receivers. You've been saying the same thing for weeks and weeks and weeks. We like our receiver room. We like our, you know what? It don't matter what you like. But what's he going to say in the middle of the season? At the, at the end of the day, it's not a smoke screen. Why do people think that other teams don't scout you? Like other teams don't know your receivers are garbage. I, I, don't I, tell anybody. Yeah, speak it into existence. But the GM is not going to say, "Oh yeah, our receivers suck. We all, need to get all, better." All he had to do was no, say, but you don't have to constantly say, "We really we like, like our, our receiver, receiver room." What are you talking like, about? We all know we that know he can't he, believe that. I, I, the proof will be in the pudding. My, if they go and address the position, then we know he was. What, what about this part of it, yeah. Jason? I, I ask you this. He said we're still in the assessment phase, pretty much. That's just GM like, speak. It, it is, but speak. like. <laughs> We were in that assessment stage for a long time on Anthony Schwartz. And we all said after five weeks, we're like, no, no. It's funny. And that dude hung on for two years. I do think, I, I agree, first of all. I agree that receiver should be the top priority. But I think you can make a case that another edge rusher is awfully high on that list as well. I agree. So if you, if they come out of this with, a, with a, another top edge rusher, either through trade or whatever, I, I do think they need to circle receiver, and I do think that they will. But putting someone, especially, it'd be nice to find a long-term solution opposite of Miles because it's been they've been trying to do it for four to five, ten years. It's been yeah. piecemealing with Jadavian Clowney, and now with Zedaria Smith, and it's just yeah. always what's the, the cycle. Well, what's of the guy they got guys. from the Giants? I, I, I do uh, think um, I do think Ogbo is a good player, but he's not an every down player. I, I think they have they have solved the long-term issue as their third pass rusher with Ogbo. Yeah, but I he's not an every down. No, you need the complimentary guy, though. I hear Miles. you, but they didn't have uh, the second or third guy going into last year. On the now receiver they do. front, um, a yeah. guy that's not a free agent, I know that, but he's, his name is constantly coming up in trade talks and I think would look great in a Browns uniform. And not only that, if you put him and David Njoku on the cover of any Browns magazine, it would be the most impressive cover of all time. DK Metcalf. What... How would he fit into a system like this? And how would you even work a trade or go about doing a trade with Seattle? To get him. Well, he's always a guy, though, that's been rumored. And yeah, uh, you know, his, his statistics have been a little underwhelming considering how talented he is. I agree with that. But the guy's a freak. I oh, mean, he's, he makes his plays speed. That... He, he's got the speed and the size. Maybe I mean, he's the obviously, he'd be a perfect fit. But you'd, I mean, you'd have to give up a first round pick. To start. To start. Yeah. And yeah. they don't even have a first round pick this year. So well, now no. you're trading more future first round picks. You wouldn't have one picks. to give up in this year's draft, but yeah. you would for next year. I just think if he were on the trade block, there would be another team that would give up a first round pick this year. There's other teams with more assets I, I think, available uh, to them. I mean, yeah. he's not like, you're not getting him on the Amari Cooper discount. No. Ugh. No. You know, I wish we could make another one. I mean, of that those was an absolute heist it's the by best the best trade that they've made. I, yeah. I, I, to me, this is the, this is the most. This is the most important offseason in Browns history. I know we say that I, we a lot. We have said that for a few years But in this, is, this is it. That's no? like this is the biggest election of our lifetime yeah, until I, the next one. I, I mean, but you, but you got to understand, like, where the water, like, like we're, the, the, the levees are getting close with Deshaun Watson. The crescendos, the naysayers, the words, it's getting more strong and strong and strong, palatable, more and more as each year goes by. Walls are closing in. Walls is cl- closing in. This, this laissez-faire, we'll figure it out stuff ain't going to work, bro. Because guess what? Yeah, you got to the playoffs. It's going to be a completely different team. I, I wouldn't say the Browns have been laissez-faire about wide receiver. I would say they haven't done a great job with their acquisitions, but they have been very aggressive they've at the position. They've spent assets on them. They've just spent They've got poorly. outside of Cooper. They've gotten it wrong. But in the, last th- in the last two years, they've traded for Cooper. They've traded for Moore. They drafted Tillman. They drafted Bell. And they signed, you know... Marquise Goodwin. They dra- they- now you, we could obviously they haven't done old, outside of Cooper. They haven't done well with those. But it's not like they've ignored the position. They've just analyzed it wrong. 
either either you're you're incompetent or you just didn't get it done. At the end of the day, like when you draft David Bell and he's not elite at anything, how do you think that's plugging a hole? Who, who's scouting him? Who said David Bell was? Jay, I said yesterday on the show. I talked to an NFL scout who said I asked him what's going on with the Browns at, at wide receiver. He said they need to go back to the drawing board and reevaluate the attributes that they that value at for. that position yeah. because they've missed consistently. And he gave examples, and what he said was he named the last three or four that they've drafted, and he said they weren't a plus at any single skill set except Schwartz in the speed, speed category. He said everybody else was just mid so they're obviously seeing something in interviews or in film or at the combine and they're saying oh that's it and they've been wrong with it but again i would say what we've said before is they weren't spending high draft picks on these guys they're drafting middle of the pack and and we i think we named two puka was a miss a lot of teams missed to let him go to the fifth round i'm on raw and i'm on raw yeah. yeah was a miss other well, than but, other yeah, than tank dell they could but had Tank Dell was a had miss. They but, not, no, well, Tank Dell was the pick that they gave you. Had they not traded for Elijah Moore, they could have drafted Tank Dell, and they could have drafted, what's his name on Green Bay? I can't think of his name. Christian, but, uh, not Christian. Christian, Christian Watson. 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 Christian Watson. tell you, though, how, how meaningful it is to be able to hit at that position later in the draft. Look at what the Rams were able to do this year. They sure. climbed out of the bottom end of the talent cycle at, at warp speed because of it, and the Lions. And, and with yeah, ab- Absolutely. And those are two out of 32 that found late, mid to late round gems. So it's not like it's real easy to do. It's hard. It's not. The answer is pick them earlier when you got a bigger net to pick from. And it is interesting, you know, because I agree. You have to go back and say, what are we looking for? What are we, what are we identifying here? Because they tried the speed route with Schwartz. They tried the hands route. I don't know if he was A+. plus. David Bell has good hands, though. I know he had a couple of drops, but by and large, he has good hands. That was his reputation coming yeah, out of Purdue. Yeah, he, he, he's a good pass catcher without great speed. So they tried the good pass catcher without great speed, and they tried the great speed without great hands, and neither one of them worked. Can we merge the two? Right? That's crazy. Anthony Bell? That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that two, is. Two of those touchdowns <laughs> and, and that's 62 year two. yards <laughs> came, came in Week 18 against Cincinnati. Yes, yeah. it did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. Hey, look, man, I, I'm just going to say it, man. Listen, if, if, if we want to, everybody should be on this party train. If you keep telling me 230 and the worth of Deshaun Watson and the worth, you should be all on board with saying you better go get I anybody think, you can in order to make that contract I, I don't look think good. there's anybody in our fan base that doesn't want the Browns to upgrade at wide receiver. I, I mean, can't let, imagine. Well, I think that, that they'll be the first pick. The, the, with their 54th pick, better be. but I don't want, round, I, it's going to be a wide receiver. Again, I... I don't want to do that. I want them to go get a veteran proven player. Oh, no, I, I need that too. Do both. That's, okay, I'm fine if they do both. Yeah. But to me, the, the, the priority is free agency. Because then if and one of them proven. stinks, you know, you've got to Right, you've got but a if, if, it's a guy, if you sign a guy who's proven, there's no reason to believe he's going to stink. As long as he's young enough. Yeah, as long as he's not going over but the But some cliff, of the guys right. that are available are 29, 30, 31, and that's the danger zone. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Marquise Brown is not that old. How old is Marquise Brown, Mike? I believe 27. Yeah. Well, he was the youngest of the, the squad. I mean, the guy's a earlier. good player. He's not Sign a superstar, but he's a good player. You know, I, Amari Cooper is really, really good. I, They don't have li- – listen, we'd all love for them to get DK Metcalf, of course. I mean, they yeah. came out. But – if Marquise Brown is the guy they bring in, that's good. I mean, he's a good oh, I'd be number two wide receiver. Brown. That's be, perfectly fine. And I think the fan base would. That'd be huge. Now, Njoku's your third option. We're or good. even Brown's your third we're option. Cooking. Now, Elijah Moore's my, not my third option. Eh, he's my <laughs> fourth option. Fine. I'm okay with Elijah Moore as my fourth option. And if those guys develop into stars, it's it's a bonus. It's a prob- a good problem to worry about. Yeah. You know, and but but yeah, they I... I how even if they drafted a guy in the second round, are we going to be confident he's going to be good? Now he might be, but we're not going to be, believe that because no. they've had so many failures. Not until those, we see it with I, that, you know, general area of the draft in terms of wide receiver. Right. One more read from FanDuel and two quick things to wrap up before we head over to WKYC for never before seen content that no one has literally ever seen in the history of the universe because it hasn't happened. And you can only see it on WKYC or the WKYC Plus app. But it is Super Bowl season and FanDuel wants to wish everyone who celebrates a very happy and hopefully successful and financially uh, positive next couple of weeks if you're like us super bowl sunday is all about scoring the best seats on the couch grabbing your favorite football snacks and placing some super bets FanDuel has so many ways to help you end the season with one w and two w's three w's hopefully even more not only can you bet on who will win the super bowl 
But you can also bet on which players will score touchdowns, how many points will be scored, and so much more. Today, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first bet of $5 or more wins. So make sure you visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to sign up. That is FanDuel.com slash UCSS. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook sponsor of the NFL. We got a Stephen Kwan video I want to show you in a sec. But first, real, real quick, five <laughs> minutes tops. AVP is now the new offensive coordinator in New England. Mm -hmm. Most likely will be calling plays with Gerard Mayo, a defensive head coach. Jason, what do you think about AVP getting a shot now to call plays? And we now know the trade-off. It's Ken Dorsey in, AVP out. I think it was important to him to get an opportunity like this. I know he interviewed with Vegas. Uh, might have had a couple other chances as well, but he wanted an opportunity to go in and call plays. And now, more than likely, he'll get that. I don't know who else would. Gerard yeah. Mayo's not going to call plays, being nope. a defensive guy. So he'll get his big chance now. Uh, he's very well thought of around the league just in terms of being a great guy. And now he'll get the opportunity that he, see, that he sought for quite a while. Now he's uh, on a team that now they're going to have a high pick, so he'll probably get a quarterback. But Maybe. is there any team with less skilled position talent than the Patriots? I can't think of one. Yeah. The Giants. The cupboard is bare. But if he does a good job there, I mean, the he, Giants he's at least have open some eyes. Yeah. Who's the he's, Patriots' he's best agent. offensive player? Bailey Zappi. No, I don't know. No, uh, I mean they're all. I mean both teams. The running back. There's Johnson. not a single good player. Ramondre Stevenson. I mean, he didn't have a great year way, this past year. Your question, Bull, is the answer to why Bill Belichick didn't get a job this cycle. I'm told that he still wanted general manager control. Yeah. And look, you got to know your lane. You got to know what you're good at. Yeah. You got to yeah. know your weakness. Yeah. And he proved his weakness. You know, the last couple of years there, it's. Bear. If yeah. you combine their rushers and receivers, not combine like add their stats together, yeah. but like their rushing leader, their receiving leader, the most yards they had, one player had, either rushing or receiving, was 642. They were dead And that was Ezekiel offense. Elliott running the ball, where, where averaging three and a half third? yards per carry. Are they third? I think so. They picked third, yeah. You you want, does anybody even know who their leading receiver was? Can you name him? Couldn't tell Tyquan you. Tyquan know. Thornton. No. Tyquan uh, Thornton was like their fifth, their 12th leading receiver. It's a guy who's been in the league for a while. Who's no, it's a game. rookie. Demario Douglas. L he had 561 were they, yards. They were dead last oh, in offense, weren't team. they? He was on my fantasy hey, uh, team. Were they dead last in offense? Well, that explains They it. must have been. I I'm, mean, starting, I'm, I'm starting to think about stripping some of Bill Belichick's medals. I'm going to have to marry Jones Jones. Um, damn. This, uh, uh, this might have been all Brady. Like, all, all of them, like, no-name gangsters – uh, on defense and, yeah. and, and I don't believe I don't believe I it see, was I don't think it was all Brady. I think what's happened I'll say is 75 25 Brady that I, I to me with no receivers nothing Bill Belichick has completely lost his ability I, I don't take away from his coaching but he's Talent done evaluation he's done a horrendous job as GM he's arguably been the worst GM in the league for the last five years yeah and so why is another team when he's in his 70s why would you turn over your whole organization to him when he's shown you in recent years he can't draft? And Ultimately, they had Atlanta all. went and with the retread yeah. over Bill Belichick. I, I th that's why. I, right. think the game, I think the game in terms of talent evaluation has passed him by. Yeah. Like the, the days of where you could just get guys and scare them to death and tell them to work hard for minimal money to, don't to, work no more. To use his <laughs> term that he used on Bernie, diminishing skills. Yeah, like it happens. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. And he's no – yeah, the guy's – Arguably the greatest coach ever is no coaching tree. If I'm drafting no successful third, coaching tree. I think I'd have a hard time passing on Marvin Harrison. I just would. What you mean? Listen, I'd take him number pass? one. I'd take him and, one. Even if, it, but if you don't have a quarterback, quarterback, that's where you want to look. Well, where are the Bears well, picking? Bears one. don't need a quarterback. Bears they're, picking one. Yeah, but they don't need yeah, a quarterback. If, I, if they decide they're going to keep Justin Fields, and they're also picking fifth. No, it, ninth. Ninth. Oh, is it ninth yeah. now? Gosh. Nine. One nine. Oh, they really look. say. See, if I'm the Bears. The Bears won a couple If I'm the Bears, I'm forcing – like the Patriots to trade up to one. Yeah. Because then who picks two is another team that needs a quarterback. The Commanders. The Commanders, right. So if I'm, I'm dropping well, do to they three. they need a quarterback? And they haven't moved on from Sam Howell that I they're know gonna, of. They're drafting a quarterback. They're going to draft a Really? So that, that experiment yeah, 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 is yeah, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. So, so, go, so, so what, if I'm the Bears, the I'll say, okay, Patriots, you want your pick of what, what quarterback you're going to take? You better hop over the Commanders. The Patriots trade up to one. Bears go to three. They still get the guy they want, Marvin Harrison, and they get additional things. Yeah, and if it, they stay with Fields. If they stay with Fields. But they're not. 
You don't I'd, think they're going I'd, to? I'd, I'd stay with him. I'm not going to lie. Wow, if, the way the winds are blowing, it's 50-50 right now. I'd stay with him. Uh, listen, you got DJ Moore. What's you could have do you you got believe, Marvin Harrison. You believe Justin Fields can be a top 10 quarterback? No, I don't. No, I think he'll be. So then, I think and ultimately, gotta, the way the Bears have to answer this question, I was watching a Monday night game when the Bears were playing, or Thursday. Yeah. It was a primetime exclusive window. And the, the conversation around him was fascinating. And I can't remember who said it, but whoever was the analyst for that game said this. You can't just be like lukewarm on him. No, you you have sure. to definitively know he's the guy or you have to move on. That's right. Oh, and it also depends what you think of the guy in the draft. Well, sure. like if, you, if you think Caleb Williams is the next superstar quarterback, Which then I even don't. if you think you don't, but if they do. Uh, Does anybody else think that Caleb Williams? I don't know enough. No, I don't know. I, I, would, I, would, I would tell you this. I watched their backup quarterback replace him and throw I, I, six touchdowns. I, would, I, would, one I would stockpile that thing up. I would go get Marvin Harris. I do right with Bull said. I go get Harrison. I go get the top available lineman if I can get him or a pass rusher or an edge rusher. Well, Harrison is one DJ Moore with a decent tight end and Cole Komet would be pretty good. There's, there's one great dude I know that ain't a bust. Player. It's Marvin Harrison. Yeah, that dude is not a bust. He's going to be a star. And if you say, all right, if Jared – Golf is not a top ten quarterback, and they could have fully went to the Super Bowl. Can you win? A, can you get to the I, Super Bowl with a twelve quarterback? 13? I actually think Jared Goff is now towards the back end of the top ten. He's, I, I think he's still I think, outside I think of the Jared, top ten. Not, my, I mean, I have to go through the list, right. but I think right now he's somewhere between nine and twelve. That was which is a, close that was a great trade for both teams. It, it worked was. out well. It really was. It, really was. Out yeah. it was great. Yeah, L A. Rarely LA, happens that way. L A. didn't think he was ready, and they didn't think he was good enough, and they gave up the picks, and they got their guy, and they got a ring. Yeah, and Detroit got all those picks, and they allowed him time to grow into the role. And yep. Goff's a good quarterback. And you're, he's a good quarterback. And, and you're in the NFC. Yeah, it ain't like you gotta go past Mahomes. That's it's right. Like you, you got a shot. That's right. right. Mike. Hey, real quick, before we move on, yes or no answer? Will ABP do a good job in New England calling plays? Yes, or no? I, I'm worried for him just because there's no talent. The talent. Bush? Yeah, I don't think they're gonna it's do. Not, it's not gonna good. end up it's good a bad for him. Spot. It's, it's just like I told you about what's the name, uh, you, you, Eric B. Enemy. It's not gonna end it, well. If they nail it and happen to get the next great quarterback, that's his only hope. I think in time, they have no talent. If they give him time, he he can do a good job. Yeah. But they got to give him more than a year. But they we know this: the Patriots fan base, not the most patient. Well, that's they've most been NFL spoiled teams. with they're, riches. Yeah, that's true. They better get used to it. Good. Yeah. All right, let's All right, talk Mike. some baseball for a sec, guys. Bull has seen this video. The other three of you haven't, and that was intentional. There's a new rivalry brewing oh, yeah. in Major League Baseball, and it involves Stephen Kwan. I'm going to play you this video. <laughs> it's Ronald Acuna in the video. He was asked to rank 10 players blindly. Blindly rank. Blindly rank 10 players, and uh, you guys see well, how Well, let me he clarify. Reacts. Sorry, Mike. He didn't know who the 10 players were going to be. Yeah, it's a TikTok trend. It's a just TikTok thing where you, you got to – Yes, you anyway, don't know who the 10 ahead. are. Here we go. But pay particular attention to when uh, Stephen Kwan's name pops up. Steve, let's play Ojalá que no salga yo ahora. Toca. Sí. Peña. Pone aquí. Debe. Correa. Siete. Robe. Falta duro. Va a poner aquí. Otani. Julio. Julio Rodriguez. He didn't even say his name and he laughed. Chisel, the cuarto, no motivo. So Quan's name comes up. He doesn't say his name. Only player he doesn't recognize by name. He just right, laughs at him that and immediately he puts him at 10. You can tell he didn't. He's like, huh, huh. Do you think he had any Last. idea who that was? No, none. He plays in the NL. And I don't blame him. AL. Yeah, he's young. He yeah. plays in the NL. But you play, play every team, team now every other year. Oh, no, you play every team every year now. Acuna came to Cleveland this year. Yeah, I went to two of the games this series. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, that doesn't mean a damn thing. I think there's real beef. I think it's real legit. <laughs> That's a fight. I'm being very sarcastic. Now, he's there's right. Real Quan legit. Is no, I know you are, Mike. Juan should be 10 on that list. You can, I guess you could make an argument for he, 9. But maybe 9. 10. I was saying the same thing. He's, yeah. If he's not 10, he's not. On that list. You know what's nutty about Quan? And I only know this because <laughs> Zach and I literally just posted a story this morning about, like, extension candidates and everything. Yeah. Quan has a war of 9.1 his first two years in the league. 
What? Well, a lot 1. of that's defense. A lot of that's so defense. So that, it adds in. Yeah. But he, his war is like top 10 all time among outfielders for its first I was going to say, later. how many guys have it's, done that? It's in there with like, I'm, I, it, it was like Bonds and Bryce Harper type numbers. That's now, fishy. now, was now Trout, but here's not, the difference. Was Trout yeah. first Here, two years? Trout was higher, I think. Yeah. But here's the difference. Quan's 26. Those guys were doing it at like 19 and 20, 20 and well, 21 and 22. Plus. But still, a war of nine. I, I, your first to me, defensive war is very fishy. I, it I doesn't have the same credibility I think it's as offense. Weight, I think war is weighted too heavily for defense. For defense, yes. I do agree with that. But he's an elite defensive two player. Two gold gloves I mean, and two two for two. two he's an excellent defensive years. player, and unlike Miles Straw, at least he may he also has no power like Straw, but he can hit. He hit three hundred. He can hit, and he can run. Where, Straw can where run do you too. think he is lined up on opening day? Is he in left center field or center field? Uh, oh, I hope I'm torn because he's an elite left fielder. I don't know that he's an elite center fielder. It but, usually transfers, though. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm going to say. You play outfield, you play outfield. Not necessarily. No, 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 no. Not always. I'm, not always. Yeah, you know better than anybody. There's yeah, a big difference. I'm, not, I'm saying there's yeah. a difference. However, I'm, I've seen Quan play for right. enough to feel very comfortable that if they move him to center field, he'll be fine. He's going to be great. Yes, but he the might be a 10 is, and left and a 9 and the center. The problem is Perhaps, they really but good. But it's going to be negligible. Yeah. But the problem is they didn't go get anyone to put well, that's it. No, That's what I'm saying. They I'd didn't like have him pick up. I'd like him to play center field because that <laughs> means Hedges Stra- play? Because that means Straw's a bench player and they've improved the corners, but as of right now he's probably the left Can fielder. Can Austin Hedges play left field? Yeah. Add oh some pop and some power no. to the lineup. I mean, I'd be better off with me playing left field. And I hate I talk- pay good money to see Bull play one game in the outfield in a major league scenario. Oh, when I was tw- when I was You know what's 15, underrated maybe? about even the guys that we consider to be bad defensive fielders? Yeah. What is wildly underrated? Tracking a baseball. That, the Very break hard. that guys get. Yeah. If you don't get the right break off the bat, you are exposed like that. Yep. Okay. Or if you just don't see it. Like, I don't you're know. just like, where, oh, this I don't right know here. how many people remember this, but the Mets did an experiment once where they put Todd Hundley, who was a catcher in left yeah. field. It was the worst well, thing I ever saw. Well, to me, it was saw. like Kipnis in center. I just that was like, bad. Now, that, that's the worst center field experiment I could ever remember. Now, when they moved Schwarber the outfield, it was bad. He's made himself into, I would say, a below average fielder and not a disaster. <laughs> yeah, right. He's no longer a disaster, but. Some guys you have to hide. I yeah, I mean, that. he's got the bat, so you're not yeah, going to you, be you, you, you guys need him in the lineup. You've got to put him somewhere. Yeah. If you want, but anyway, if you, you but, want to see a civilian fail, uh, just I want I would love to see people put regular people in outfield. Oh, it's like, so hard! I'm going to give you three chances to Hilarious. catch this or hit them ground balls at shortstop. That ball, <laughs> that those high fly balls. <laughs> I mean, and, it and is nothing, hard. Rarely is a ball hit straight. Right. There's always yeah. spin. Yeah. yeah. And so it's slicing away from you, slicing. Yeah, the away. wind you know, and the sun know, and the clouds. If he's a righty. And he gets a late swing on it. It's gonna move away from that's him. That's right. Hey, and real, sorry, sorry, Jay. Real quick, do we have time to play the clip? Because I thought the guys would find this interesting, Mike. Do we have time or no? Uh, Is this can the you, can you explain? Can you explain it real quick? Because I got a couple so, super chats. So just Stephen Kwan. So right now on MLB Radio, they're doing a really fun thing. They are. Ha- it's called Players Week. Yeah. So every hour during the day when they have live shows from, I think, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., whatever it is, there's an active Major League player that is sort of the co-host for that hour. I've heard a little bit of it. Great. Yes. It's great. Yesterday, Stephen Kwan was with my man C.J. Nitkowski and Ryan Spielborgs uh, in the afternoon, and Kwan was asked about his confidence level. They were talking about the fact that last year was the first time in his career between the minors and the majors that he had more strikeouts than walks. And he talked about his confidence level and building it up. And he said something fascinating about when he was a freshman in college, if we could play it here. No, you got to explain it. We don't get time to just explain it. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. explain it. Anyway, he talked – he said he had imposter syndrome when he went to college. Yeah. He played at a big-time school, I think Oregon. Oregon State. And he had – like, there's other major leaguers, uh, Nick Madrigal, a couple other guys. What? Adley Rushman was on that team. Rushman. Yeah, they had a very good team. It was Trevor – what's his name? On the Twins, Trevor Larnack. I can't remember how to pronounce his last name. There's a few different guys, and he said he felt like a total phony. He thought he sucked. He couldn't play. He had no confidence. He didn't believe in himself. He was, and, and to hear a player admit that just yeah. blew my mind. And he said at the end of his freshman year, he went with a sports psychologist to try to build up his confidence and just focus on the things that he was good at and just trying to get better at it. And it made a huge difference. And he, and he developed the, – the guy who was, I, didn't make it to the majors, the guy who was a starter – and in his position, kind of took him under his wing, and it was it was just really fascinating because you never hear players be vulnerable like that. And I thought it was pretty pretty cool that I mean, Stephen Kwan 
is a next level intelligent. Just listening to him talk. I mean, he's, he's a great guy. Too. Oh my God. He's a great Such a guy. Unbelievable. I'd love to get him on, but it was really cool. He was There's really great. There's a chance great. we could get him on. Yeah, that'd be There's nice. There's a chance we could get Stephen. I like him. He's a good player, uh, but the problem is, you know, you can't have a bunch of guys that don't hit home runs. We've been through that. Right. So. Jay, do you know your spring de- training dates yet? Yeah, I just booked last night, uh, 17th and 22nd. We'll be February. there. We'll be there the of exact February. same time. February. a couple days. Yeah. yeah February. Of February. Yeah. yeah, so my days are, I think, the same. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, hey, so, did I tell you what days I'm going to be out there? What days? None. <laughs> yeah, come on, UCSS. Why don't you pay for us to go to spring training? Well, my hope is that you'll join me on the UCSS. We could do the UCSS yeah, hits together. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be a blast. Yeah, yeah. That is okay, our UCSS good. content from spring training. Awesome. These two. We got some super chats here real quick. First one comes from Matthew Dinkins. Hypothetical question, guys. You're in the Browns draft room in the third round. Michael Penix Jr. is still on the board. Would you want to take him as an insurance policy if Watson can't get back to form? He won't be on the board. That's the pie in the sky. But he won't be on the. Board. By the way, I think it was ever. I, 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 there's a guy. He's the one greatest Super Bowl. I'm not going to say his name right now because I can't actually think of his name. Who's on CBS Sports Radio? He's a draft analyst guy, and he said that Michael Penix Jr. has a reputation of not working hard, and I thought that was totally outrageous for him to say that. That's secondhand opinion. I, secondhand information is one thing. Secondhand opinion is lame. I don't. I don't like that. Throwing that on a guy who's about to get drafted. As a matter of fact, I'm, well, I, I happened to CJ Stroud. I, 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 I know. Worked out okay for I want to start an initiative. Like, like that's a sucker move. Like the that is a sucker you. move. I didn't like, like that. If you got you, if you ain't got nothing else but to, but to say about work ethic, that means you're not really a draft scout. I mean, you don't know that. You don't know that he. You no, know. but in all fairness, and you know this. The one thing that the NFL scouts try to do is to find out that, right? That's the vertebrae of a player. Absolutely. Because a great player will never reach that next level without the work ethic. 100% agree. So it is important. It's an important Of course it's important, but for an NFL no, draft it, guy to say it without having firsthand yeah, knowledge of it. I'd like to know it. how many, because in some cases, you're hearing that over and over and over and over again, and I'm guessing that's the case. The only ones who would know that are his Washington coaches. Yes, and 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 they're yeah. not likely to tell anybody that. Well, I don't know. Not I, I not don't the know. media. Maybe a not general me- manager, but a, a yes, media that's member, a big difference. almost yes. never. I got a couple more super chats. I got to get in okay. here. Yeah. Uh, Devoid Archangel says the Browns need to trade up to get Maserati Marv. That ain't happen. <laughs> ah! Brody's bottom line says the Cavs and Heat were the best teams in the East when LeBron was there for eight years. And Joshua Heisler says, can Jay or Bull host the Ultimate Guardian show? They'd be the best candidates. Love listening to him talk baseball. Uh, potentially. I would like to, but potentially. I just, I just I'm, I'm overwhelmed right now. I hate to say it. I'll just say to be determined. We'll see. Possibly. It, it, it's a lot, man. I mean, it, you guys are gonna, you guys know that. You do things are being worked on behind the scenes. Shows. We'll, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, it's happens. just a lot. We'll see what happens. And uh, unfortunately may, for me, we don't know what we're gonna do. I need seen to do a few less. minutes on KYC. Unfortunately. Peace.